Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Dr. Paul. Thank you for taking some time this evening to visit our channel and uh, watch this video. And uh, as always, we encourage you to visit our website at uh, www.usmlvideos.net. That is www.usmlvideos.net, where we have posted hundreds of videos with comments from so many students and you can read them and prepare well for your for your USML examination. Tonight I want to talk a few minutes about polio virus and its vaccines. Polio virus is has a very very interesting history. In fact, let us start with uh, the group, the classification. It is uh, an enterovirus. It goes into the human body through the oral route. So fico oral route of transmission. So it's a enterovirus just like hepatitis A, B, C, D, E and mumps virus. This is a, a enterovirus. So this enterovirus it uh, infects the gut and the latter it goes into the bloodstream and uh, then it finally infects even the peripheral nerves and the central nervous system and ultimately causing uh, paralysis. Remember most of the polio virus infections are subclinical. Our tendency is to think about paralysis whenever you think about polio virus but paralysis develops only in 1% of the infected patients. So in 99% of patients with polio virus there are only subclinical symptoms at the most like uh, fever, arthralgias, headache and uh, weakness, those kind of symptoms. Now let us think about the growth and as you know viruses they do not grow in the blood. Bacteria grow in the blood but viruses they do not grow in the blood and uh, culturing viruses is a very very difficult thing. We need to use cells and those cells should also have receptors for this virus. So when you culture polio virus, those cells should have a receptor so for the polio virus. So polio virus it attaches to those receptors on the cellular surfaces and goes into the cell and it multiplies. So that is the basic uh, mechanism. If the cell does not have uh, a receptor for polio virus, it becomes resistant to the infection by these uh, cells. Now there are three antigenic uh, types of viruses and we also make uh, uh, vaccines based upon those three antigens. Now pathology and uh, pathogenesis. This is an enterovirus that's why it goes into the mouth and uh, it is it gets into the body through the gastrointestinal system and it is excreted in the stools. In patients who get this uh, virus it can be excreted for many many days after the infection. So these people are infectious even when they are asymptomatic. These viruses they sometimes attack immunological system staying in the Peyer's patches in the intestine and later after they enter into the blood they go through the axons of uh, peripheral nerves and ultimately reaching the central nervous system and causing the paralysis. Now let us think about uh, clinical findings. You see I told you earlier that this virus most commonly it is subclinical. In fact in very young patients, in infants it does not even cause any problems. And um, if you look into the history of polio virus, it usually affected children from the upper socioeconomic classes, the children of rich people. They used it to get this virus. They used it to get paralysis. Why? Because it, in the children of the poor people, and I mean in the, the lower socioeconomic stratums, those children they mingle with each other, there will be less hygiene, there will be overcrowding. Because of that overcrowding, the virus 
goes to their body and it produces immunity when they were very very young and that immunity is permanent and it protects them throughout their adult life. That's why children from the socio-economic groups are less susceptible to para, para, paralytic polio than the children from the upper socioeconomic status where children take more uh, hygienic measures where they clean their hands and uh, where there is less crowding. So children from the higher socioeconomic groups they do not uh, get this. I mean, most commonly, they do not get this. And they are, when they are exposed in their adulthood, they are more susceptible to get the paralytic polio. You remember Franklin Delroy Roosevelt. Roosevelt was the United States president during the Second World War. He got his polio at the age of 39 in 1921. I mean, he got the paral paralysis at the age of 39. That means he never developed immunity before that. So this virus can attack a person at any age and it can cause problems. In the mild form, it causes just the fever and arthralgias, headaches and uh, inflammation in the pears patches and the diarrhea itch. In aseptic meningitis, that is a uh, non-paralytic polio, it does not cause paralysis, but the incubation period is 7 to 14 days. And after this, it causes stiffness and pain in the back. And it, is, it causes aseptic meningitis. That is the non-paralytic form of poliovirus. And finally, in the third phase, the paralytic poliomyelitis. As I said, only 1% of patients infected with poliovirus, they get paralytic poliomyelitis. And it is a flaccid paralysis resulting from the lower motor neuron damage. And in many, many, and in some patients actually, after they get the paralytic poliomyelitis down the years, after many, many years, they get progressive poliomyelitis muscle atrophy. Their muscles just atrophy. And that is seen in uh, very few patients. Now, laboratory diagnosis, throat swab will be useful to identify this. And uh, you can also identify it through antibodies. You can use a PCR to see its uh, genetic components. And um, coming, coming to immunity, many patients get passive immunity by getting a a uh, non-virulent strain of uh, polio from a patient who had uh, received polio vaccine or a family member who had received a polio, polio vaccine, these patients can get the immunity from that by receiving that non-virulent strain of uh, polio virus. But mostly there are two, uh, two vaccines, the Salk vaccine that is the killed vaccine Number two, the Sabine vaccine is live virus vaccine. The live virus vaccine is more potent because it will stay in the gut and it secretes IgA antibodies. And the IgA antibodies prevents the entry of a wild polio virus when the patient is exposed to it in the future. And uh, it also produces IgM antibodies, IgG antibodies, and they help the patient in the bloodstream. But IgA antibodies secreted in the gut, they actually prevent the patient from getting uh, polio from other vaccines. So live vaccine and uh, killer vaccine or salk vaccine, they are useful to prevent. But coming to the treatment, there are no antiretroviral drugs, I mean, sorry, antiviral drugs for the treatment of uh, poliomyelitis. All you can do is uh, supportive therapy for the patient. So basically, those are the most important points about uh, poliovirus. I hope that helps you. And um, you can always visit our website at www.usmlevideos.net. That is www.usmlevideos.net. We have posted so many videos and uh, you can actually put your comments on it so that everybody